members of the jury. We are going to uh, conclude with the jury instructions, beginning with the rules for deliberation. It's five pages from the back. I think it's easier to uh, count from the back if you want to follow along. These are some general rules that apply to your discussion. You must follow these rules in order to return a lawful verdict. Number one, you must follow the law as it is set out in these instructions. If you fail to follow the law, your verdict will be a miscarriage of justice. There's no reason for failing to follow the law in this case. All of us are depending upon you to make a wise and legal decision in this matter. Number two, this case must be decided only upon the evidence that you have heard from the testimony of the witnesses and have seen in the form of the exhibits and evidence and these instructions. And number three, this case must not be decided for or against anyone because you feel sorry for anyone or are angry at anyone. Number four, remember the lawyers are not on trial. Your feelings about them should not influence your decision in this case. Number five, your duty is to determine if the defendant has been proven guilty or not in accord with the law. It is the judge's job to determine a proper sentence if the defendant is found guilty. Number six, whatever verdict you render must be unanimous. That is, each juror must agree to the same verdict. Number seven, your verdict should not be influenced by feelings of prejudice, bias, or sympathy. Your verdict must be based on the evidence and on the law contained in these instructions. Deciding a verdict is exclusively your job. I cannot participate in that decision in any way. Please disregard anything I may have said or done that made you think I preferred one verdict over another. Your verdict must be unanimous. That is, all of you must agree to the same verdict. The verdict must be in writing, and for your convenience, the necessary verdict form has been prepared for you. It is as follows, so I'll just go over it here. And the verdict form in this particular case is really pretty simple, especially compared to uh, many other cases. At the, uh, at the top of the verdict form is the style of the case. Then it says manslaughter here at the top because that's what the defendant is charged with. Then it says we the jury find as follows as to the defendant in this case. Check only one. And there's, and there's only two choices here. A is the defendant is guilty of manslaughter as charged, and B is the defendant is not guilty. And obviously, you are the finders of fact. You are to determine what the facts are. You are to follow the law and apply the law to the facts. So when you do that, if you determine that the state has proven what it is they need to prove beyond a reasonable doubt, then you should check A. If the state didn't prove, what they are obligated to prove in this case, then you should check B, that the defendant is not guilty. Now, if you do check A, that the defendant is guilty of manslaughter as charged, then you have to answer one question. In the law, we call it an interrogatory, because if we uh, just called it a question, it would be too easy, and in the law, we have to be not so easy, right? So there's one interrogatory here. It says, if and only if you find the defendant guilty of manslaughter, then please further find if the state has proven this fact beyond a reasonable doubt. The defendant carried, displayed, used, threatened to use or attempted to use a firearm during the commission of the crime. If the state proved that beyond a reasonable doubt, check yes. If they didn't prove that fact beyond a reasonable doubt, then check no. Then it says, so say we all down here, indicating that your verdict has to be unanimous. Then there's a place for the four person to sign the verdict form, and I'll go over the duties of the four person next. And then in case the four person is handwriting like I do, there's a line for the four person to print his or her name. And then there's a line for the date. And today's day is August 23, 2019, in case you didn't know. All right, back to the script, submitting case to jury. In just a few moments, you will be taken to the jury room by the bailiff. The first thing you should do is choose a four person who will preside over your deliberations. The four person should see to it that your discussions are carried on in an organized way and that everyone has a fair chance to be heard. It is also the four person's job to sign and date the verdict form when all of you have agreed on a verdict and to bring the verdict form back to the courtroom when you return. During deliberations, jurors must communicate about the case only with one another and only when all jurors are present in the jury room. If a juror goes to the restroom, the deliberations should stop until the juror returns. You are not to communicate with any person outside the jury about this case. Until you have reached a verdict, you must not talk about this case in person or through the telephone, writing, or electronic communication, such as a blog, Twitter, email, text message, or any other means. 
Do not contact anyone to assist you during deliberations. These communications rules apply until I discharge you at the end of the case. If you become aware of any violation of these instructions or any other instruction I've given in this case, you must tell me by giving a note to the bailiff. Many of you have cell phones, tablets, laptops, or other electronic devices here in the courtroom. The rules do not allow you to bring your phones or any of these types of electronic devices into the jury room. Kindly give uh, those uh, devices to the bailiffs. The uh, bailiffs will end up putting it in a little basket, and uh, we've named it the cell phone basket because cell phones go in that basket. And uh, if, if there comes a time when you think you need to uh, call one of your loved ones, uh, we will allow you to make the phone call you, just to let your spouse or children or whoever know uh, where you are. But a bailiff will be there to make sure you don't talk about the case. So he'll, he'll overhear what, uh, what you say there. If you need to communicate with me, send a note through the bailiff. If you have voted, do not disclose the actual vote in the note. If you have a question, I will talk with the attorneys before I answer, so it may take some time. You may continue your deliberations while you wait for my answer. I will answer any questions, if I can, orally here in open court. During the trial, items were received into evidence as exhibits. You may examine whatever exhibits you think will help you in your deliberations. These exhibits will be sent into the jury room with you when you begin to deliberate. In closing, let me remind you that it is important that you follow the law spelled out in these instructions in deciding your verdict. There are no other laws that apply to this case. Even if you do not like the laws that must be applied, you must use them. For more than two centuries, we have lived by the Constitution and the law. No juror has the right to violate rules we all share. I think in the beginning, I indicated that we were going to have six jurors and perhaps up to four alternates. Ultimately, we decided to have three. We don't normally have uh, three, but we thought in an abundance of caution was a good idea just in case there were some issues. Fortunately, there were no issues. Uh, I don't want the alternates to feel th that they wasted their time uh, because they haven't, because uh, if any of the other jurors was unable to serve for any reason, uh, then uh, we would have to have at least the six jurors uh, or else I would have to declare a mistrial, and I don't think that's an anyone's best interest. So uh, alternates, please do not feel that you've wasted your time. You're uh, basically our first players off the bench, and um, obviously you can't have a team with some players off the bench in case somebody else uh, blew out a knee or something, okay? So, um, Mr. When you do reach a verdict, knock on the door. Any, any questions at all? All right. Verdict form. I gave it to the clerk. So the six of you may go back and start to deliberate. And our alternates can stay here for right now. Okay, very good. First of all, let me thank you very much. I mean, it's been a long week. It's been a grueling week. Uh, we know that there's plenty of other things you could have been doing. As I said in the beginning, everybody has a life, and there's plenty of things you could have been doing. So on behalf of everyone involved in the case and the people of Pinellas County, uh, I'd like to thank you very much. Let me uh, advise you of some uh, the privileges that you have. The most important one is to be left alone. Nobody can stalk you and call you and bother you and all of that. Uh, if you want to talk to anybody, you can. You uh, obviously have the right to be left alone, but you also have the, the First Amendment right to talk to whoever you want at this point. Um, if you want to talk to your family and friends about it, you can. If you want to talk to the media about it, you can. If you want to talk to anyone involved in the case, you can. Um, and then if you want to talk to them, obviously they can engage in conversation with you. But if you want to be left alone, you have that right to. Okay? So I think, um, I think we have all of your stuff over here. And then um, you can uh, exit that way. Now, um, normally I'll give you my card with my phone number. And if, if you wanted to find out what the verdict is, you can give my office a call. But in this case, if you want to find out what the verdict is, you can just go online or, or read the newspaper in the morning or watch the news because, um, quite frankly, it has been getting a lot of media attention. Okay? Any questions or anything? All right. Well, thank you very much. Have, have a great rest of the weekend. All right. Any other issues we need to talk about? All right. So um, <coughs> every man, woman, and child in America has a cell phone, so I'm sure that all of you do. So make sure that your cell phones are on and charged. And then um, 
if, if our deputy can make sure that we have all their phone numbers, and, and that includes Mr. Draca and all of the attorneys, and then once we have a verdict or a question, we'll call you so don't uh, wander off too far, okay? All right. Thank you. Well-tried case. And uh, we'll be in recess until the call of the jury. If they need the... Yeah, yeah, I mean, that should just... Yeah. All right, all right. And we'll make sure that only the evidence that was admitted is going back there. I think there were a couple of things that... The jury instructions wouldn't go back. Well, they have their own jury instructions. Yeah, no, I'm saying the board. Right, right. If it's a demonstrative evidence, it doesn't come back. If it's admitted, it goes back, obviously. Is there, is there ammunition and the firearm? Yes. yes All right, so. Um, we have a photograph of the ammunition. You can just keep the ammunition out. All right, so is there any objection if the bailiff says that uh, we can't have the gun and the ammunition back there at the same time? We'll have the gun back there. If you want to see the ammunition, we can give you the ammunition, but then we have to take the gun away. Any objection if the bailiff says that? No objection. Here. All right, very good. Okay. Thank you.